Welcome to the Gallant Goblin. My name is Grady. Today we're looking at the Wardlings line of pre-painted miniatures from WizKids. These are not random minis. You can buy exactly the box that you want. Each box contains one player character mini and one companion mini. These were announced in August of 2017, and the first wave, which is what we're looking at today, came out in March of 2018. Now, these were released with very little lore. They were intended mainly for kids and families uh, when playing tabletop role-playing games. As a result, each of the figures represents a child-aged adventurer spanning a range of common classes, and they also each come with one companion. According to the press release, in the Wardlings realm, kiddos are the adventurers, as they gain their abilities at a young age but slowly lose them as they get older. When they reach adulthood, most forget that they were ever adventurers to begin with, as they become consumed with everyday work and chores. The kids are the only ones who are able to see their animal companions. You may recognize these lore elements from popular young adult stories, such as the Chronicles of Narnia or His Dark Materials. They typically sell for seven to eight dollars, occasionally cheaper during sales. There are currently three waves of figures in the line, with the recently released third wave introducing monsters such as trolls, zombies, and goblins, but we'll talk more about them in a future video. Let's take a look at the minis as I tell you more about what the future holds for the Wardlings line. Additionally, each mini comes with a short blurb on the back that I think could inspire some homebrew abilities if you have a party of these minis. So for example, here we have the boy fighter who was picked on when he was younger and now defends the bullied with his battle dog. If you want to incorporate this idea mechanics-wise, you could allow the battle dog to defend others, for example using its action to grant bonus AC to someone in melee range. Otherwise, you could give the dog a Mastiff stats, which has a challenge rating of 1 8th. The boy druid and his tree companion help guide travelers who are lost in the woods. The tree companion looks like a young treant, but there are no stat blocks for scaled down treants. Alternatively, you could give it a combination of stats from the awakened shrub with a challenge rating of 0 and the twig blight with a challenge rating of 1 8. In March of 2019, WizKids and Renegade Game Studios announced a forthcoming Wardlings campaign setting using D&D 5th edition rules. The book is being designed by Elisa Teague, a 17-year veteran of the tabletop gaming industry. She worked on products like Betrayal at House on the Hill, Widow's Walk, and the Apocrypha Adventure Card Game. She's also released a couple of adventures on DM's Guild, and she ran the No Stone Unturned Alternate Reality game that led up to the D&D Stream of Many Eyes in 2018. The girl rogue's pet badger helps her spot enemies while hiding in water or trees, preventing her from being surprised. You could give the badger bonus to hide in those terrains and the ability to prevent surprise rounds or grant higher passive perception while doing so. The beast stat block for a badger in D&D has a challenge rating of zero. According to the press release, the Renegade Game Studios campaign setting book will give players a chance to create and explore stories centered around the miniatures from the Wardlings product line. Players will embark on enchanted adventures along with their favorite animal companions. The minds of the youth, uncorrupted by the vices and responsibilities of their elders, are able to perceive magical creatures and events in the world around them that adults cannot. The campaign book is expected in the fall of 2019. The girl wizard's magical abilities has attracted a genie friend to help her fight evil. You could allow the genie to store a single cantrip or appropriately scaled spell to cast at will. You could also give it the stat block of a homunculus with a challenge rating of 0 or a boggle with a challenge rating of 1 8th. The girl ranger and her lynx hide until the time is right to strike, either sniping from afar or leaping into battle. The lynx could help give her a bonus to attack rolls or grant her the rogue's sneak attack on the first round of combat. There's no Lynx stat block, but you could use the Panther as a reference with a challenge rating of one quarter. Renegade Game Studios is primarily known for their popular board games, including Clank and Raiders of the North Sea. They also developed the RPG world and system called Overlight. Overlight received a lot of positive attention for its lore, unique world of shattered floating continents, characters, and stories, not to mention its lovely art. That book also attempted to introduce a new RPG dice system, which the Wardlings campaign setting book will not have to do since it'll be using the 5th edition D&D rules. We'll talk more about the Wardlings campaign setting book once more information has been released. The boy cleric and his winged snake try to bring light and hope to others with their healing abilities. The winged snake could have a healing cantrip or grant a bonus to medicine checks. 
There is a Flying Snake stat block with a challenge rating of 1 8th, which I assume is used for pets of the Zentarum, though you could also use this mini as a young Kuatl or as a replacement for the rare medium-sized Kuatl from Icons of the Realm's Tomb of Annihilation set. Let's take a look at the Wardlings when mixed together with other pre-painted D&D minis from the Icons of the Realms line. The proportions of the minis may be a little bit off if you're using them for adult medium figures, but they could certainly represent taller than average small races, such as halflings or gnomes, or just use MMO logic, where some important characters get upscaled in size for visibility, and give those players the opportunity to have the same size minis as others while still being able to distinguish them in some capacity. Theo, in fact, used the girl wizard figure in a one-shot as a halfling wizard. And certainly most of the pet minis can be useful in any RPG setting. Even if you're not interested in a whole new setting, or the Wardlings lore in particular, these minis can certainly be incorporated into your regular role-playing game of choice. If you really want to use these as intended, bring a set of them to your next family gathering, find the 6-12 to 12 year olds, have them pick a mini and a pet that strikes their fancy, and just run them through a quick adventure. You don't have to have a battle grid or follow a particular rule set even. Just let the imagination and theater of the mind run wild. This is a great way to introduce the next generation to the joy of role-playing games, and with three waves out in the Wardlings lines, most kids should have no trouble finding one that resembles themselves. The only other thing to note is that some of these are they're they're kind of fragile uh, they're about similarly prone to breakage as any other whiz kids line so the boy druid when i was opening up his box i uh, dropped him on tile and his arm broke off uh, i could fix it with a bit of gel super glue not too difficult uh, but considering these are aimed more for children as a target audience who may play a little bit rougher with them, that's just something to keep in mind as well. In conclusion, uh, the only other thing to say is really that these are very nicely sculpted, very nicely painted. We will be covering the other waves in the Wardlings lines, so if these looked good to you, uh, subscribe and stay tuned. Uh, also, if let, let us know in the comments if you have any feedback or any additional thoughts. We'll see you next time on the Gallant Goblin. Mm -hmm.